I'll look after you, but yeah, I know you're gonna be my best man. Why this flurry of queries about my campaign? It's not the PM's business. It's Bartlett, sir. It must be. You will not leave without permission. This is an official reprimand. Johnny Hamilton's a good man, Elvis. He's a fool. The breakout will occur over 48 hours. A hundred thousand troops on five fronts. Is it all too complex? Activity, Cecil. A build-up of reinforcements at Anzac, 20,000 men landing at Suvla. Is it enough for me, though? What if the Turk is dug in? Where are you up going? Hot walkers in the neck. Not sure exactly. What about you blokes? I heard Lone Pine. Ah! You blokes move forward! Ah! Have the New Zealanders moved south to support the Australians at the neck? No, sir. So, alone at the neck. We're Stockford. How about the Jongpool, sir? The Navy should do something about their slippery ladders. From General Stockford, sir. Now we have Chanak Beer. I need him there up in those hills aiding the Anzacs. He says the Turks tend to be aggressive. I'm going to Suvla Bay. I'm taking charge down there. If I may say. No, you may, Braithwaite. Your advice is not welcome at the moment. I'm going to Suvla Bay, damn it. Oh, no. Good afternoon, sir, and welcome to Suvla. What are you doing, Freddy? Getting it done, Johnny. This is only temporary, for the shade, of course. Your orders were to move from here and take the hills. I gave you 20,000 men. They're very tired, Johnny. Hasn't been an easy day, as you can imagine. And so very hot. I ordered you to advance to the heights. We must move to aid Burwood's New Zealanders. Doing it. I'm on the move. Some of my men are in the foothills already, clearing the way. Down the coast at Suvla Bay, the British finally attacked. Artillery shells set fire to the scrub, and the British troops were caught in the flames. The Turks chased them back to the beach. It was the end of the Suvla push to the heights.
battered. General. It's so silent now. Yes, Bartlett. Yes, it is. I witnessed yesterday, sir. It must be difficult for you. Don't patronize me, Bartlett. Still, I spoke with Aspinall. He told me of the victory at Chunuk there. I congratulate you. I relieved the New Zealanders up there with the North Lanks and the 5th Wiltshire. They were overrun. I've lost Chanak Bear. the devil, Johnson. You met our distinguished visitor, Colonel White. How do you do, Johnson? Sir. Mentioned in dispatches twice, Johnson. So, son, how do you feel about an extra four shillings a day? What do you mean? You've been bumped up to full corporal. You'll be telling me what to do by the end of this war, eh? No, sir. <laughs> what did I tell you? The sergeant said you didn't take kindly to promotion. Oh, sorry, Harry. Lieutenant now. Dismissed, Johnson. Thank you, sir. <coughs> I always knew you'd be something tall. The corpse not anything, Bev. It's just the army. Still, I'm proud of you, mate. Your mum will be too. No. Dad'd be real proud. You reckon? Yeah. Little Tom. Don't remember much about him. No, he never belted you. You were his little Tommy. Well, you just watch him, he'd say. I'm not much, Bev. Just a bloke. Oh, well, you're not something yet, Tolly. But you will be. Yeah. I know what I'll be. Listen, you've got just as much chance as everyone else. As much as Stewie and Chuck? And two Bob? And Cliffy? Sir, Charles, I thought I told you not to get shot. I thought you were in Suvla. I was for my sins. Oh, here. Oh. Something for your convalescence. Is it painful? How did you get it? I wanted to go up with Godley's men to the Heights battle. It's just a stray bullet. There are no stray bullets in war, Charles. You're probably lucky you didn't make it to the top. Such a disaster. Not the word. Over the past four days, Hamilton's run up. How many casualties do you suppose? 20,000? 25,000? On three fronts. And lost all three. Maybe not. 
We're holding on. Damn it, Ben. I always like this. Holding on. Hamilton's task was a peninsula. What's he managed? A few bloody acres of nothing. I watched men burn to death yesterday. Saw English troops running away from the guns. Hamilton men like him forging the end of an empire. You go too far, Ellis. Charles, you're injured. Repatriate yourself. Go to London. You'll be relieved of your obligations and you can write the truth. We're all censored. Geography doesn't negate that. Then I'll write it and you take it to London. I'm staying here, Ellis. I've got a job to do. Not for much longer, I'm thinking. Surely even Hamilton can see it now. Never mind, Birdie. Never say die, I say. I'll be in touch, sir. We had Chanak Bay in our hands for some time. It means we know how to take it. So, your plans to retake Birdie, they're well advanced? Uh, still working out the details, sir. Good. Well, I gave Freddy's stop for its souvlis and ginger. He's to immediately take the first ridge leading to the heights, and then, uh, on we go. Good. Welcome back, sir. Souvla Braithwaite, what do we have on General Stockford? He's been in contact, sir. Once again, has he finished moving to the ridge I ordered? He says he wants to push on, sir. I don't give a fig what he wants. I asked you, has he moved for the ridge? Not quite, sir. He says he'd very much like to, but first he needs more artillery and water. God help us. More like a million. After the failure of the big breakout, everything came to a stop. We'd been here four months and got nowhere. We were completely fought out. The Turks were probably the same. No one knew what to do next. Reminds you of home, eh? No. It's an old move. Things change. I had such faith in him, in the beginning. Definition of insanity. To repeat the same action over and over again and expect a different result. Do you think London really understands what's going on? We have to do something. But is it up to us? Someone please rid us of Ashmead Barpet. Will someone please rid us of the commander? 
Good evening, gentlemen. Sir. Good evening, sir. I couldn't help overhearing. We're just fussing, sir. I apologize. Not at all. We're together on this. So, what's to be done, do you think? Gentlemen. Sir. Sir. I think you should know I cabled Kitchener that I relieved General Stopford of his command at Suva. He leaves the peninsula tomorrow. If I may say so. General Delisle will replace Stopford until the arrival of General Bing. Bing's a fine choice, sir. <laughs> Gentlemen, General Braithwaite and I have something to discuss. Since the failure of the breakout, there's been a general nervousness in London. I detected in my correspondence with Kitchener. More than ever now, we must all do what we can to pull together. Of course, sir. Your stroke of the GHQ boat. Is all well, do you think? Are we all pulling together? What is it you mean, sir? It was Kitchener who suggested I replace Stopford. Yes. He suggested I sack you too. You ought perhaps to know that I didn't select you, Braithwaite. Kitchener gave you to me. But I'll not abandon you. I cabled him that my confidence in you is complete. Thank you, sir. Am I correct in this? Do I have your complete trust? Absolutely, sir. You wish to see me, sir? I want you to go to England, Dornay, immediately. It's clear I need somebody I can trust in my corner. Yes, sir. Tell the king. You're his friend. Tell Kitchener, tell England. You can not prevail here. Yes, sir. Well, thank you, Guy. I'm relying on you as my man. Sir.
Sir, let me introduce Keith Murdoch, an Australian correspondent. Who? Murdoch, sir. Oh, yes, yes. I received your letter. Hmm. How do you do? How do you do, General? Are you all right, sir? Well, now that you're here, uh, what do you want? I'd like your permission to visit Anzac, sir, for a short time. Step this way. You are aware we have strict protocol regarding journalists reported. I am. We must not impart any confidential military information unless through the censor. Right. There have been some who have tried to transgress. I hope you won't be one of them. Not at all. Beautiful. It is. So, Murdoch, I have your absolute word on this. You have my word. Do better. Blind schoolboy. <laughs> Stop this, Bartlett. You've been like it since the beginning. I have, Henry, since you so kindly pointed out. From the moment Hamilton slaughtered his men at Hellas. This is war, for God's sake. Men die. Your attacks on the leadership are nothing else but emotion over intelligence. Henry, please. Am I to take it that you intend to continue this campaign against General Headquarters? There's no such campaign, Henry. In fact, it's the other way around. They hate me. For no apparent reason. Good God. You're drunk, Bartlett. And I'm tiring of your company. Both points clearly very true. Oh. Oh, now, Henry, don't be like that, for goodness sake. But you two gentlemen. Please, don't let old Henry intimidate you, for God's sakes. Since I've arrived, I've met the GHQ staff, all of them. Bean took me on a tour of the Anzac trenches today. I saw it all. Yes. This is a total disaster. Anyone telling me this? The Australian newspapers are full of... Oh, yes, they're full of tales of advances. Mm. Honourable battles. Medals won. Mm. Tales told by idiots. And 
that's us, my dog. So he said, I'm, I'm just sorry that my own children won't have that chance. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say good night, gentlemen. Good night, sir. Good night, sir. <laughs> night, sir. Ah. I've suggested to him that he encourage the Navy to another major push. And? No. He still believes in his army. What's left of it? He now admits at least the breakout was a failure. And his response is this call for more men. I can't believe. Another 95,000 to be tossed into the moor. Surely Kitchener can't agree to this. The man has a very dim idea of who his real enemies are. Or if he's in any danger. Which he is. He's only got that moustache, cheery disposition to protect himself. Well, that's Bean, Bean's view. Yeah. Well, Bean's a good man, and he understands better than the others. Mm. It's my impression. I tried to engage Bean the other day. He's not a man to rock the boat. I wanted him in London, telling Prime Minister what's actually happening here. Will you break the censorship agreement? Well, that's besides the point now, wouldn't you say? Now, the issue now is... To save the lives of some of these young men. I'm leaving for London tomorrow. Introduction to the Prime Minister and details what's going on here. Mm -hmm. For God's sake, man, I'll keep it safe. Thank you, Butler. You can rely on me. Oh, there's a sigh of relief. If I felt any better this morning, I'd be positively jubilant. Done your duty. I had no choice, sir. Who's yours from? Well, and what you got to say? Not much.
libérer votre chambre, monsieur. Merci. Merci. Mr. Murdoch. We spoke in June, Bartlett. Do you recall? Of course. And do you remember the subject matter of our discussion? Huh? You gave an assurance not to criticize GHQ or its offices or the conduct of the campaign. As far as I know, I've kept to this. On September the 8th, you sent a letter via Mr. Murdoch to Mr. Asquith. An uncensored letter. Indeed, I did. I have a perfect right to address my Prime Minister. How did you find out about it? That letter has been seized by us. Has it? And has it been forwarded to the proper address? I warned you. I would send anyone away who spoke against the campaign. Well, then you must send away practically everyone on the peninsula, including the Turks. Your press credentials are hereby revoked. You are no longer the guest of the army. You are to return home. Ah. And may I leave at once? What? Thank you so much, Walter. I've been anxious to get back for some time. I certainly have a lot to say in London. I did you. Oh, um... Mediterranean leishmaniasis. I beg your pardon? It's a parasite. It finally kills its host, and therefore dies as well. I suggest you look it up. felt he needed to put his case for a continuation of the campaign. And more men. Did he? What bloody difference were you going to make? I have no idea, sir. He wants 95,000 more men! Well, you're part of his GHQ. What do you think? I think it's a ridiculous idea. You know him, sir. He's... He's seeing a curate's egg. Is this the view of your fellow officers? Sir, the truth is, General Hamilton has lost the support of all his closest advisers, with the possible exception of Birdwood. Are you aware of this blasted letter from the Australian journalist, Keith Murdoch? I thought Bartlett had written a letter. He did, confiscated. So this bloody Australian wrote his own. Now, Asquith's circulating it to the whole cabinet. I have not seen it, sir. Scathing on Hamilton. It's a farrago, but the PM is in a mood to believe most of it. And damn it all, so am I.
What's next for you, Alice? I'm through with all this. I'm broke. I'm doing a lecture tour of Australia, New Zealand. Show them my moving pictures. It'll be fun. I'll enjoy it. Show them the truth. The truth is, I've been an observer of these horrors for far too long. This is my seventh war, Charles. I'm tired. Yes. Good luck. And Kitchener accepts this? As a, as a strategist, he has completely failed. For the general staff and Hamilton, the men have nothing but contempt. Contempt? Australians now loathe and detest them. It... What's his name again? Murdoch, sir. Murdoch. Has no honor. Turning in. Good night, General. Good night, Braith. Sir, Lord Kitchen is about to send another cable. He says it has to be deciphered by you alone. Hmm. Shall I have you woken to read it? No. I'll read it tomorrow. Sir.
Jive. You're eating. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it was. But for the first time, I felt some hope. Maybe we were gonna make it. Maybe I'd make it home.